Motion by Councilor Elliott, second by Councilor Martin that we delay action on this until a later date, I mean a later time this evening, and that's all they'll include everybody else who has questions regarding this. All in favor of delaying, say aye, opposed, we will delay. We need to, by law, open the public hearing, but after the public hearing is open, we will also recess that till about 7.30 so we can begin the process of honoring uh, Councilor Howe. The uh, vote is adopting the minimum residual fact of fiscal year 2006. It is voted by the City Council of City of Lowell as follows, to adopt the minimum residential factor of 0.885973% for fiscal year 2006, which will shift the share of the levy to the commercial, industrial, and personal property classes. The public hearing is now open on a part of the proponents. Anyone here to speak in favor? In favor, in favor? Hearing none. What is the, anyone here speaking in opposition? In opposition, in opposition? Hearing none, motion by Councilor Eileen Donahue, seconded by Councilor Rita Mercia, that we recess this public hearing until about 7.30. All in favor of recessing the 7.30, say aye. Opposed, we will be recessed on this item until 7.30. It is my unique pleasure and honor to proceed with an item that isn't on the agenda, but everyone who's here is very much aware of what they're here for. And therefore, a number of people have registered to speak, and I would like at this time to have whoever wants to speak on behalf of the legacy of former mayor and city councilor, Dick Howe, please come to the podium, identify yourself, and you'll be allowed the opportunity to speak. Mr. Senator, Mr. Representative, Mr. welcome. Mr. Mayor, mayor Stephen C. Panagiotakis, 191 Sanders Ave. Kevin J. Murphy, 63 Newberry Street. Mr. Mayor, through you to the council, it's not, uh, not often that we get the opportunity to come down and speak before the council, but uh, tonight is a very historic night in the city of Lowell when we're honoring someone who spent over 40 years advocating for, fighting for, campaigning for, and serving the citizens of this city as a city councilor. 42 years of anything is a long time, but 42 years, as all of, us, all of us who have been involved in local politics know, 42 years of local politics is certainly, certainly quite an achievement. Um, as a kid growing up in Lowell in the 60s and 70s, you know, you're not really in tune to the local political uh, happenings, but uh, one thing that filtered through all of my uh, busy adolescence was the name Dick Howe. That was one name that you knew about local government, and you knew him as a tough fighter for the issues he cared for. And it's funny, people think that this city council is, uh, can get crazy at times. Uh, they should have seen it in the 60s and 70s. I mean, this was the Wild West, and this man here was Wyatt Earp. <laughs> when you see all the, saw the picture recently in the Lowell Sun of, of uh, Dick bearing down on that catcher from his Providence College days, uh, I could only think of uh, Pete Rose coming down uh, uh, when he hit Ray Fossey. I'm lucky the catcher got out of your way that time. I could see, though, the same determination on your face that you've had many times when I was on the school committee and you were standing up there at the mayor's seat uh, uh, fighting for, for an issue that, that you cared about. Dick, uh, I just want to say on behalf of the, uh, certainly my family and, and the people I represent, we want to thank you for your many years of service here to the city of Lowell. When you leave this building tonight, you'll be taking with you a lot of experience and a lot of history, but you'll be taking with you the knowledge that this city has been far better off for the last 40 years, 42 years, with you serving it than it ever would have been without you serving it. It's my honor to uh, bring the best wishes of the House delegation, Tom Golden, Dave Nangle, and myself this evening. Uh, you know, people can talk about your political uh, experience, and I know they all will. And I, I just think after 40 years, all the constituent services that you have done for the citizens of Lowell uh, have been just incredible. And that's probably the most important function that a uh, politician can, uh, can provide to their constituents, especially on the local level as a city councilor, as yourself. But you know, Equally as important as being a politician, uh, Dick Howe has been probably, other than myself, one of the best lawyers in the city <laughs> of Lowell. <laughs> I, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, co-chairing a trial with him one day, uh, or actually it lasted probably over a week, 
and uh, he had a direct examination of a uh, of a police officer and uh, in the legal parlance it was proving the chain of custody for a uh, blood sample and probably 95 percent of the lawyers in Lowell could never ever do what Dick Howe did that day and I sat in amazement and watched him prove that chain of custody and I turned to his daughter who was um, trying the case with us at that time and I said you know I just wish that this direct examination had been filmed because it is the finest seminar that any lawyer could ever see in how to practice law. So not only have you been a great advocate as a city councilor for the citizens of Lowell, but equally as a lawyer advocating for the downtrodden, for those who are dispossessed, for those who have no voice, you have been a great person in the city of Lowell and I commend you tremendously for it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Dick, I just wanted to bring back one memory before we read this resolution to you that, uh, uh, about you being a, a tough fighter. I think it was your first term as mayor. Uh, back in there, I think there was a mayor's bill. The mayor had to okay uh, municipal pay raises. Mayor, aren't you happy that you don't I'm have to so do those things these days? But I guess uh, Dick was being very reluctant, and there was a crowd gathered out in the steps, about 70, 80 uh, municipal employees throwing rocks up at the, uh, at the mayor's window. And uh, rather than taking a back door or a side door out of the building, he came right through down the front stairs and right through the crowd. And I think that is a testament and an example of your toughness and the way you stood by the issues that you believed in. And I think the crowd potted. Yes, they did. Was. <laughs> yes, they did. On behalf of the Massachusetts General Court, this resolution was passed both by the Senate and the House on Monday. And it's congratulating Richard P. Howe on the occasion of his retirement. Whereas Richard P. Howe was born in the city of Lowell on December 30th, 1932, and Whereas Richard P. Howe served on active duty in the United States Army in 1955 and 1950, let's uh, strike that, 1955 and 1956 and. Whereas Richard P. Howe served as a civilian agent in the Office of Naval Intelligence in 1963 and. Whereas Richard P. Howe taught law and government at Billerica High School and Lowell High School and. Whereas Richard P. Howe has been a lawyer since 1963 and earned the Greater Lowell Bar Association's Lawyer of the Year Award in 1993 and again in 2004, and the Massachusetts Bar Association's Community Service Award in 1996 and. Whereas, beginning in 1965, Richard P. Howe was elected to 20 consecutive two-year terms of the City Council, receiving more than 200,000 votes from the City of Lowell and. Whereas, Richard P. Howe served four terms as Mayor of Lowell, including from 1970 to 1971, 1988 to 1989, 1990 to 1991, and 1994 to 1995, and. And, whereas Richard P. Howe was mayor in 1988, negotiated the settlement of a segregation lawsuit against the city that prevented a federal takeover of Lowell schools and led to the construction of 14 new schools with 90% state funding and. Whereas while Mayor Richard P. Howe steered the city of Lowell through the most important economic development projects in the last half century, including the renovation of the Bon Marche building, the financial resurgence of the former Wang Towers, and the construction of the Saugus Arena and the Lasher Park and. Whereas Richard P. Howe promised the voters when he first ran for office that he would always speak out on the issues and through 40 years of service he kept that promise. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Massachusetts General Court hereby commends Richard P. Howe on his distinguished service to his country and his 40 years of outstanding public service to the city of Lowell and further congratulates him on the occasion of his well-deserved retirement and be it further resolved that a copy of these resolutions be trans transmitted forthwith by the clerk of the Senate and the House of Representatives to Richard P. Howe. Signed by the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House, Representatives Golden, Murphy, Nangle, and myself. Congratulations.
Every, everybody be seated, please, because we are absolutely not finished. Mr. Mayor, through you, if we could uh, ask uh, Ed Sullivan, the clerk of courts, to come up to make a brief remarks. Um, be before, Ed, Ed be is the only one, yes. Your Honor. Um, okay. that uh, I think has served longer continually than Dick Howe. He spent his, this is his 47th year as clerk and 55 years consecutively if you add his city council in Cambridge uh, tenure onto that. Before, before we recognize Mr. Solomon, I have an announcement that might trigger Martha to call home and to a taping of this. I've been informed that Congressman Meehan will be speaking this evening sometimes after 7.30 p.m. on the House floor to honor, to honor Richard Howe. This is covered on C-SPAN and Channel 44 locally. If you are not aware of that, you might want to make a call and have it televised because we're not going to be out of here by 7.30. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan, it's such an honor to see you here again. Nice to see you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Mr. Manager, it's a pleasure and an honor for me to stand here this evening to honor my friend. I have fond memories of this building. In 1952, as a young Cambridge city councilor, I came to the city of Lowell for my first trip. Walked into city hall, looked at the board, and the name that I recognized, Martin O'Sullivan. I said, this is the first one I shall talk to. I went down to his office. The young lady asked who I was, gave her my name. Out comes Martin O'Sullivan from the back office, a big strapping Irishman with a head of gray hair and a nice suit and looked to me like a movie actor. And that was my first trip to Lowell. Martin O'Sullivan was our guest of honor this evening, grandfather. And tonight I'm sure that all the Howes and many others that are descendants of Martin Sullivan, O'Sullivan, are proud. And I'm sure that he's looking down here this evening and probably having a laugh that I stand here honoring his grandson. That friendship has lasted for all those years, and Richard, I hope it lasts forever. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Probably. Hi. Just uh, good evening. My name is Chris Natali. I'd like to thank the city manager, Mr. Mayor, and members of the city council to say a few words about city council Richard Howe. <clears throat> I'm particularly fortunate to know Richard Howe in several separate and unique capacities. I know Richard Howe as a city councilor, as an attorney, as my dear friend Martha Howe's father, and I know him as a family man and as my friend. <clears throat> in each of these roles, I have great ad greatest admiration and respect for Richard Howe. As a city councilor, I know a man who has strong, in fact, unbendable ethical values. A man who takes his job very seriously and always votes for what he believes is best for the city of Lowell. Richard Howe's four-decade tenure as a city councilor is a testimony for his love of the city of Lowell. When I first visited Lowell in the mid-1970s, when the city was in serious plight, and compare that memory to this, the city that it is today, it is quite frankly unbelievable and astonishing. I don't think there is a city in the country that has revitalized itself to the levels the city of Lowell has. This revitalization didn't happen by accident. It happened with steady commitment, vision, lots of hard work by community leaders and strong local government. When I think of the short list of men at the top, I think of Richard Howe. Council Howe, I'd like to thank you very much for all your hard work and commitment. Thank you.
Mr. Mayor, Mr. Manager, members of the City Council, distinguished guests, and members of the Howe family, um, considering Kevin Murphy's statements and uh, Councilor Howe's uh, adroitness at picking apart the cases of low police, some may find it funny that I'm here to, to speak in, in honor of, of uh, Councilor Howe, former Mayor Howe, but um, I'm, I'm speaking to more important things than, uh, than disagreements. Um, I add my voice to the, to the previous speakers who have spoken with great eloquence and truth of former Mayor and City Councilor Richard Howe. Forty years ago, Richard Howe was elected to this distinguished council. It's been said that an institution is the lengthening shadow of a man. That being true, mere longevity causes Councilor Howe's shadow to be long indeed over this community. More important than longevity, though, is the quality of the man who has accomplished this remarkable feat. I have been lucky to work with Councilor Howe during the past 10 years. I can attest that Councilor Howe is a man of integrity and courage. These attributes drive his reputation as a gatekeeper of the public trust. He is a politician who stands for no special interest group, but he is a man elected by the people who is truly for the people. In this rough and tumble political world, Richard Howe survived and thrived. He has brought his military intelligence experience, his skills as a lawyer, his devotion to hard work, and his enormous commitment to his faith to this august hall and made us all the better for it. I have not agreed with every vote that Councilor Howe has made, but I have never doubted his commitment to our community or his devotion to the common man. Commitment to values always trumps compromise with Councilor Howe. I have learned that, less, this, that lesson from this great man. I thank him for it, and this fine community owes him a debt of gratitude. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Could you do me a favor in honor of the chambers and Mr. Howe by removing Sorry. your cap? Actually, I had something planned, okay. that, but that's okay. <laughs> Who's speaking first, Tyler or you? All right, uh, my name is Paul Johnson. I live at 793 Merrimack Street. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, we're here to present Mr. Howe with a plaque in recognition of his longtime commitment to the acre and the residents of Lowell from the Coalition for a Better Acre. However, uh, the part with my hat being on was, um, I've, when we were just talking 42 years, Mr. Howe took office when I was three years old. <laughs> And when I got old enough to vote, my father made sure I voted for Mr. Howe. <laughs> and uh, even though I'm not often here, I, I do keep an eye on what's going on. And the whole point of leaving my hat on was I was going to say I don't take it off for many people, but I take it off for Mr. Howe. <laughs> Sorry I stole your line. <laughs> right. um, anyways, Mr. Howe, my name is Tyler Jones. and. Before I became president of CBA, I was president of Julian D. Still um, Tenant Council um, years ago, the early 90s. And someone told me, said, this um, council, you got to meet him. His name is Dick Howell, and say so he's a strong um, council, and say so he, he's for the people. And I said, I don't know many council people like that, any politicians like that. They said, trust me said that if you, um, when, when, you be, when you meet him and say, you're president of Julian D. Still now, so you got to work hard, you got to be committed, and you know what I mean? And, and by watching you on the council and stuff, being committed, and I made myself committed um, as president of Julian D. Still. And trust me, I, I took the long road, the hard road, you know what I mean? Protesting here, doing that, working hard for the people because the people put me there. And I'm pretty sure the people put you here and you made a commitment to the people for 40 years. And I thank you for um, that, that backbone of making sure that people don't forget that communities they work hard and um, who knows what it can be in 40 years. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? One of the best sign holders you ever had. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at you, Armand, and thinking in 1965, what was it, 65, we were standing in the front of the old Lincoln School, <laughs> and it was so cold. But, and what brought that to mind was that 
the first 20 years, Dick, were so much more fun than the second 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> they just were more fun politically. Everything was more fun 40 years ago. It was, everybody got involved, everybody, it was just fun. So I want to thank you for that because you have kept us involved. And my children vote all the time. And I don't think everybody's children votes, but mine do. And uh, it was just, that's, that was part of the, the uh, upbringing and the commitment that we all made. So uh, we've always been there and we always will be. So thank you. Carol Collins, 94 Montgomery Avenue. And we're all here to let you know that as a brother and a friend and an advocate for the city of Lowell, you're, you've been our role model and we are here to acknowledge your contributions. Anyone else? I would like at this time, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm the mayor, I'm the mayor. I, I got to talk to my buddy. <laughs> you see, this happens every council meeting. Everybody stands up for him. It's true. <laughs> I remember. Uh, well, it's a pleasure for me to be here, Dick, uh, to, uh, because I think I'm the senior guy who served with you more than anybody here. And uh, we enjoyed it. We respected each other. And I've always, uh, I, well, let me say this. Uh, we've only had, I think, one disagreement. I mean, you've had a few, but it's only been one. It happened, hold on, hold on, hold on. It happened July 12, 1968, and it's still not over. No, but <laughs> I'm only kidding. Uh, but you know, we, but we've always respected each other, and hey, we've naturally had a few disagreements. You know, I, I'm, I'm very proud to stand here and have you be here after all these years. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a pleasure. You know, we went abroad once, uh, overseas uh, on a trip, Dick and his wife and a, a number of other people. Mary, I'm gonna say a couple. And uh, you know, we, you think that Dick is, you know, he doesn't like to have a good time. You gotta go overseas with him. I mean, this guy, oh yeah. Now, I, I'm not saying we gotta send him overseas now to have a good time, but I mean, hey, we had a tremendous time. I, we really did, and, and it was a, a wonderful thing. But you know, uh, he, uh, what he did was this. He, we were walking down, and this was in Germany, okay? We were walking down the street, Bill Neary was with us, and all of a sudden, where's Dick? He's gone. I said, where the heck did he go? So we, go, we take a few steps back into this establishment, and there's Dick inside. He's talking to this German guy. And he says, I want a cabbage head. I want three pounds of corned beef. He says, I want a peck of potatoes. And I want, the guy says, oh, the, he says, mine hair. He says, you're an Irish boy from Massachusetts. He, Dick said, yeah. He says, how'd you know that? He says, because this is a hardware store. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but you know, it's really. Uh, there goes the Irish vote for hey, you, pal. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I, I've always enjoyed it. But hey, Dick, I, I just, you know, a lot of people have given you a little taffy here tonight. And a little taffy is always good now than a lot of epitaphy later. I congratulate you, and I tell you, I'm very, very proud of you. Still lasted like this. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, Danny Tenzar, 69 Baltimore Ave. Former counselor. Former counselor. Um, I learned of Mr. Howe through, like Stevie, uh, growing up in the Highlands. He always knew Mr. Howe was a force. He, he took care of the city. He was a leader. Um, I went to school with, her, with his daughter, Martha. And one of the things you, you, you learn 
as you're growing up and you see, you see certain role models, people that are willing to step forward and make tough decisions. I read in the paper and I chuckled that you lose friends as a result of making tough decisions. It's true. No, it look it is. I mean, that's Danny, what... Danny, look around. <laughs> there are no lost friends. But one of the things that Mr. Howe has never been afraid of is to debate an issue, is to, as he described it, is to inquire. We have a duty, he always used to say, and I used to, I'd always hear it, we have a duty as city councilors to inquire, to question things. It's not about always getting along. And when I came to the council, that's what I thought it was. He thought I was nuts. I was like, yeah, we're supposed to get along. He said, that's not how it works. <laughs> it's just not how it works. And in order for this city, one of the things that I learned in, in my very, very short time, I only spent a tenth of the time, Mr. Howe did, on this council. It, it is outrageous that he spent 40 years here. And he still has his sanity. I mean, it, it is absolutely, seriously amazing. But one of the things that, that he, he taught me is, is that in order for this to go forward, in order for our city, our great city, to go forward, we need controversy. Look at La Lasher Park. Look at Songus Arena. It was one of the most divisive issues in our city. But our leadership, thankfully, it, it won out. Mr. Howe's leadership. And we've got a ballpark and an arena we're proud of. I was talking to Mr. Howe on the way up, and, and he was describing it as kind of like, that's one of the decisions that put Lowell on the map. It turned the, the image of Lowell around. And you don't get that without leadership like Mr. Howe. You don't get that from people that aren't willing to take a stand. You don't get it. I'd like to thank Mr. Howe for 40 years of service. It's just incredible. I'd like to thank him for some of the lessons I learned the hard way on the council. The, once again, I, I thought we were supposed to get along. But you need disagreements to bring out whether or not there is truth whether or not the facts that support your opinions meet muster. It's important to bring out the other side of a controversy. And Mr. Howe has always done that. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Howe, for your leadership, your stewardship, and always your ability to inquire and question. And I, I take that. I think that's one of the lasting legacies that we as, as, as younger generations should take from this is, is that one, we have a duty to serve, two, we have a duty to inquire, and as one of his sisters indicated, we also have a duty to vote. Mr. Howe, I thank you very much and I, and I appreciate it. Mr. Mayor, Curtis LeMay, um, I just wanted to state a couple of things. I was here back in December of 1987, and uh, although they didn't have cameras or we weren't doing a live remote, I was uh, listening to accolades being said on my father's retirement. So I know how much of an honor it is for his family here this evening. Um, I just wanted to go back, um, 1964, I was a student at the Pawtucket School on Mammoth Road, and uh, my teacher was Paul Sheehy. And that was the year, my information serves me correct, that uh, Dick Howe and my dad and a couple of people helped elect Paul Sheehy as a state representative. And uh, it was the following year that Dick decided, I don't know if in part because of that or if his love of public service, that he decided to run. And uh, my dad was uh, the manager for Bob McGuire at the time. And although two different camps, um, I recall 
how great everyone worked together. And that's uh, very important. And I was uh, proud to serve, not as long as some others, but uh, your two terms of mayor was very important. And uh, I thought that desegregation, as far as you representing the city, was uh, one of your best acts that would be hard to follow. And um, I was just proud to be there and serve with you as a colleague and as a friend. And uh, I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you very much. Anyone else? It is my pleasure, my honor, to invite former Mayor Councilor Howe to the podium to deliver his farewell speech. I would like for you to do it from this part. I usually uh, do not get overwhelmed, but to some extent I must confess that I am tonight. Um, I'm pleased and honored to have people from Cambridge, the clerk of courts, Ed Sullivan, his nephew, Michael Sullivan, who is the mayor of Cambridge, who is present here tonight, uh, as well as Senator Panagia Takas and my good friend and fellow attorney, Kevin Murphy, who is no slouch when it comes to the trying of cases. And uh, there are so many others that I would want to acknowledge, but due to the time restraints, I would like to limit my comments to those that affect, that have affected me over the many years. And uh, I want to say that this evening constitutes the final meeting and appearance in this uh, historic chamber. I've always had a great deal of admiration when for government when I enter this chamber and facing this podium every night we appear here is John Lowell, who was the instrument and the person who the city is named after. But in view of the fact that this is my final evening, I want to make a few comments for the record. First, I would like to acknowledge and thank my immediate family. And number one on the list is my wife, Mary. Um, during the many years of political controversy and confrontations. She sustained her character and her support and her dignity. And I was, I greatly appreciated that. I also want to acknowledge my oldest son, Richard Howe Jr., who was the Register of Deeds, his wife, Roxanne, and his son, Andrew. And I might add that Dick has also been intimately involved in the citywide parent organization. And uh, they have a noble effort in doing whatever, whatever is possible in improving the quality of education in our city. I also want to acknowledge my son, Peter Howe, who was a civil engineer and who was a director in the uh, engineering firm of Face Poppet and Thorndike in uh, Burlington, Massachusetts. 
We also want to recognize his wife, Roseanne, and their children, Peter Jr., Kimberly, Eric, Emily, and Rachel. And I finally want to recognize my daughter, Martha, who for the past 15 years has been associated with me in the practice of law and who is well versed in the field of, of uh, politics. Uh, she does very well in that field, almost as well as she does in the legal profession. And um, I also want to acknowledge my two siblings, my sister Catherine, Kathy Nevada, and my sister Karen, Carol Collins, who briefly uh, made a statement here tonight. Um, they have been with me constantly and repeatedly from the beginning, and I've always said that I'd much rather have them with me than against me. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to say a few words relative to my relationship with the uh, news media, and specifically those individuals who covered the city council over the past four decades. And I can honestly say that uh, the many controversies we've had, and I don't ever recall uttering a cross word as it relates to many of the members of the local newspaper. And I'm primarily referring to Frank Phillips, to um, Brian Mooney, Glenn Johnson, Rob Gavin, Terry Williams, and last but not least, Chris Scott, who has covered City Hall politics for the past decade. And uh, we came close to having a bit of controversy, but I think we avoided that. And uh, I especially want to thank him for the effort and the time he put into preparing and uh, completing this past weekend's publication. Finally, I want to address the present generation and the past generation. And I want to extend to them a sincere thank you for their support, their encouragement, and their commitment, not only to me, but to the cause of improving the quality of life for everyone in this city. When I first ran for public office in 1965, I told the voters that I would speak out on the issues that you may not agree with everything I had to say, but at least you would know where I stood on matters that affected each and every one of us. And I feel that I have kept my word. And I also feel that the government that we have in this city, the planning form of government, is the best form available because it's the form that gives us the most balance as far as power responsibility is concerned. And I feel that in order for, for a city to continue to thrive, the public has to pay attention. We have to have more individuals, young members of our community, become involved in politics. When I ran for office in 1965, there were 55 people who were candidates for nine seats on the city council. This past November, the city did not have, it was the fourth largest city in the state. It failed to have a sufficient number of candidates to complete a primary election. Therefore, it's incumbent on each one of us to tell the young members of our community that, that the political process 
is something that is enjoyable to participate in and to be part of. If you want to do it right, you have to take some hits. But by the same token, it's something that democracy requires. We have a government of the people and by the people. And too often, it becomes a government of the few people. And the way to avoid that is to have the public tuned in. The public duty does not simply, simply, is not simply discharged when you cast a vote. You have, to become, you have to become involved in the affairs of government. You have to become aware of what's going on in your community, in your state. And if you do that, government will thrive. And the average citizen and the communities will all benefit from it. And if I have no other message to leave you, it would be that we have to get people to run for public office, especially on the local level. It's obvious that there is a, is a decline in, it, in, 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 in any interest in this type of government. That has to change. And if it doesn't change, then the city and the state and the country will be in trouble because everything st starts on the local level. Local government's the training ground for democracy. Anyone and everyone who is a problem, the first stop is at the local representative of the city council. Consequently, if we don't have a strong system on the local level, then we're not going to have a strong system, system on the state and the national level. In any event, I simply want to close my remarks by saying thank you very much for all that you've done for me over the past 40 years. You've supported me, you've encouraged me, and you've made a commitment in assisting me. And um, I think when asked the question, what did I ever do for the cause of improving the quality of life in our city and our state? I can say because of your support and because of your commitment to, the, to good government, we were a team and we did make a difference. And that's what government's all about. And I appreciate your, your cooperation, your appearance here tonight. Thank you very much. I know that there's a tremendous bash awaiting you on Fairmont Street someplace, but if you would allow your colleagues who may want to say a few words about you, we would get you out of here soon enough. Councilor Bud Caulfield. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Howe, Mayor Howe often said that public service was a very noble and admirable profession. In this elected body this evening, with everyone in attendance and the viewing audience at home witnessed a thank you to a man who has served his city for 40 years, never quivering, never going to the left or the right. He always kept a steady course. And I must say that Councilor Howe, Mayor Howe, never ever was questioned with his integrity. Always an immense person who valued his integrity and dedication extremely well. Mayor Howe, Councilor Howe, good luck to you and good health. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Donahue. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, too, would like to congratulate Councillor Howe on 40 years of service, which is extraordinary, and his family, um, who have always been there, I'm sure, for Councillor Howe, but for the city as well. Um, there would be one uh, question I have, and that is, um, I'm wondering if Councillor Howe will publish a book after this, um, and, and part, one chapter has to be on Howisms. Um, where would we be without the no-brainer um, phrase? Um, well, well, it, it comes to mind oftentimes, uh, and, and, and many others. So uh, again, uh, congratulations and best of luck. Um, I won't say retirement because I don't think knowing Councillor Howell that that's in the cards, but um, again, thank you. Councillor Elliott. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it really is an emotional evening for, certainly uh, if for you, Councillor Howell, your family, your supporters, and the Llewellyans watching and, and the Llewellyans in the audience. I can tell you I'm not sure how you did this for 42 years, having been here for eight. And, and with all due respect to you, Councillor Howe, um, I have no idea how your wife and your family did it for 42 years. Uh, my question to you is, what will you and Mary do on Tuesday nights now that this is your last meeting? I'm not going to watch television, I'll tell you that. <laughs> And what will Mary do with all of the tapes? <laughs> uh, Councillor Howe, I, I'd like to wish you and your family uh, all the best as, as you move on to an, another chapter in life. Um, I've been sitting next to you for, for 10 years, and, and I've seen you been a steward on, on so many issues uh, long before I sat here. And um, for eight years that I've sat here, I. I feel that I have been fortunate to sit next to you and, and to get your guidance and, and direction and, and advice, particularly as a, as a freshman city councilor. Um, many a night I wasn't sure whether I would have to hold you back at some point in some discussions, um, but whether it was a political or parliamentary procedure um, or just about Lowell's past, um, I believe it's made a positive impact on me um, as a counselor um, and as a person and, and as a citizen of the city. You leave a long legacy of public service, Councilor Howe, and we certainly never agreed on, on everything, um, a lot of things, maybe most things, uh, but not all. Uh, I don't think you'd have it that way. Uh, and you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet, as they say, and um, I certainly was a recipient of a few eggs that you broke over my head. <laughs> but I want to thank you for your contributions, um, certainly for the last four decades and, and in the last eight years. It's going to be something new to me. I, I don't know who I'll be sitting next to after eight years. I've never sat next to anybody else. Um, but one thing, we will miss you on Tuesday nights. And as my eight-year-old daughter says, and I, and I think this was a compliment, um, well, I know it was a compliment to you, Tuesday nights are going to be boring without Councillor Howe at the meetings. <laughs> so um, I just want to wish you well. Thank, Thank you. you Councillor. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, as I, I look around the chamber tonight, I think um, I've probably known uh, Dick Howe less than almost any, for a lesser period of time than almost anyone else here. So I probably know him least well of, of most of the folks here tonight. But I would like to share just two uh, memories I have. When I first, uh, I was a young lawyer and I, I practiced in Boston for a number of years and first moved back to Lowell. And I think, I don't even remember who my client was, but I think I was representing a, a bank or a ins like, title insurance company. It was an important transaction for the city of Lowell. We had a closing down in the, I think, the uh, Lowell Plan Conference Room. And uh, adding up all the figures, and I, I believe Councilor Howe was there, was the mayor at the time. And uh, it was an important transaction. We came up a couple hundred dollars short at the closing. and. Uh, Dick said to me, is that that's all that's holding this up at this point? And I said, yeah, people are on the phone trying to straighten it out. 
and uh, walked upstairs to his law office, came back down with his own check for whatever the shortfall was. So if the city's a couple uh, dollars ahead in the budget today, I think we owe it to Dick. <laughs> um, I'm not sure he ever put in for reimbursement for it either. The, uh, the second time I, I came across him was about five or six years later in, in a coffee shop down in Kearney Square. And I, I just happened to run into him by accident and you know, told him I was thinking about running for council. And uh, he encouraged me to run, uh, much like he uh, had spoke earlier tonight, which I always thought was odd. Here's a guy who's on the city council and, in essence, encouraging me to run against him. Um, but I think both of those anecdotes speak to uh, Councillor Howe, former Mayor Howe's uh, commitment to the city. He wanted others to get involved. He wanted others to uh, take up the cause and run for public office. Uh, I'm not, I'm, he may regret this day having that conversation with me, but um, it was certainly well appreciated at the time and is, is heartfelt to this day. Um, you don't do things like that unless you care about the city you live in. And so those are, are two things that I'll always uh, remember about Dick and hope others learn those lessons as well to get involved and to run for public office and, and at least give a portion of the service that he gave to the city. Thank you. Council Reedemer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It seems that I heard those words before, run for public office, we need new blood. And so 10 years ago, I threw my hat in the ring and took his advice. And I served a side of Councillor Howe, former Mayor Howe, for 10 years. And I have been honored to have been shoulder to shoulder with such a remarkable man. And I look upon these chambers as being very dignified and many important events have taken place here. This event this evening is equal to all of those very special events when you look around and see friends and family and the pride of all the people that love Councillor Howe so very much. And I think about the family and I look around and see their faces and I know they're smiling on the outside, but I still see the tears. I see that this is a very moving experience and a moving day for, for the family. And I can understand that. Um, I also want to say that I believe personally that the measure of a man after all the years have passed is when he looks back and says, what have I given to this world? And in Councillor Howe's case, he can be happy to know that I feel he's given a remarkable family and that of his children, along with Mary, have produced a wonderful family. That's the legacy of a man. Not to mention the fact that he has put in 40 years of dedicated public service. Not an easy thing for two years for one term, but to do it for 40 years and the phone calls and the complaints about the snow and the, and the potholes and the this and the that, and to be an attorney on top of it and hear it from another end. It's remarkable, and I truly respect you, Mr. Howe, Councillor Howe. I hope you feel the same about me. I certainly feel that way about you. Congratulations, and I wish you the very best. And Mary, you've been the rock of that family, and I really respect you, too. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Milanazzo. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Mercier. Uh, Councilor Howe, congratulations on this uh, well-deserved uh, retirement. Uh, I only wish that um, I had a longer time to serve with you, I'm just finishing up uh, my second term. But um, for those of you that don't know, I actually started working for the city back in 1978 in the planning department. So my time with uh, Councilor Howe, former Mayor Howe, goes back over 27 years, having spent time in the planning office and also with the Lowell Plan and the Lowell Development and Financial Corporation. And I have to tell you, especially when uh, Councilor Howe was mayor, he would attend every uh, Lowell Plan meeting and, and LDFC meeting because he really uh, went the extra step uh, for the residents uh, uh, of this community. And we enjoyed um, Councilor Howe being mayor because um, uh, he seemed to um, become uh, friendlier, a friendlier councilor, I guess is a way to put it, as mayor uh, when we had to bring some things to the council uh, when I was over at the planning and, and, and development office. But uh, I think his, uh, his tenure, 40 years on this, uh, on this esteemed board, uh, really a second to none, and I just want to wish uh, Councillor Howe and his, uh, his family uh, all the best, and thank him for teaching me over the, over the 27 years that we've, uh, we've been friends, um, that uh, it's important to get involved and to, to stay involved. So, Councillor Howe, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brother. 
Well, Council Hall, I've only been here a real short time, but um, you've been here since before I was born. So um, <laughs> I, I likewise know Mr. Howe from uh, growing up in the, in the Highlands area and uh, his family. And all I can say, it's a great testament, testament to your family, the hard work they've, I, is going, coming through a campaign. I know that they must have put in over the last 40 years in the hard work that you've put in. Um, it's, 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 great. it's a great way to, for you to finish up. I congratulate you and thank you for your years of service. And uh, hopefully, I know you won't be watching the meetings, but hopefully uh, I can call upon your uh, vast experience as, as one of the new guys to uh, pick your brain over the next, uh, the next few years. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Before, uh, before I say something, and I do have something to say, I'd like to recognize City Manager John Cox. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Councillor, um, although we have not agreed uh, from time to time uh, over the years, uh, I want you to know how much I congratulate your service to the city. I want you to know how much I uh, congratulate your family's commitment to the city. And uh, I want you to know that I truly wish you and your family nothing but the best in your retirement. Congratulations on a very, very committed, dedicated career. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll, uh, Martha has given me eyes over there, so I will be brief, but on, uh, on uh, Thursday in Not West Weekly, uh, you'll see some of my comments about Dick Howe in the newspaper. I want to thank everybody, by the way, for attending this my last meeting as mayor tonight. I really appreciate this. I absolutely, I absolutely couldn't have a, a, a better time to retire as mayor than tonight. I've known Dick Howe for 60 years. We met on the ball field. He was playing first base for St. Margaret's and I was catching for St. Joseph. And our first altercation is when I hit him going into first base and everybody had to separate us. We have a history, Dick Howe and I. When my sister graduated from St. Joseph, Dick was looking for a secretary, he hired her. He was my father's lawyer, my brother's lawyer. When I was at the Housing Authority and we ran into any kind of a problem at the Housing Authority, Dick Howe as mayor was there to assist the Housing Authority and the people we served on a number of occasions. He was always calling to make sure that everything was okay and what could he do to help. I remember distinctly going to New Orleans with Councillor Howe and his wife and a bunch of us over the Preservation Commission. And the story I'm going to tell you is an indication of the reverence and the respect that people in this business had for Dick Howe. It was a Saturday night. Dick and Mary and I went out to eat. They were heading home early. It was early in my eyes. And uh, I was meeting the rest of the troops someplace else. Paul Sheehy was there and a whole bunch of us. And everybody said, no matter what happens tonight, we all have to go to Mass tomorrow because Dick Howe is going to be there and he's going to count heads. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. We walked into that church and every single delegation that was with us was in church, not for God, but for Dick Howe. <laughs> You have been an inspiration to a lot more people than you know, uh, as attested to by the continuing getting reelected uh, from year to year for the last 40 years. I have the utmost respect for your integrity and your honesty. No matter what happened with Dick Howe on the council floor, no one had ever questioned his honesty, his integrity, and his love for the city and the people he served. I want to congratulate you and your family and wish you the very best and if there's anything that we can do in the future for you, please let us know. There isn't a member of this council and prior council that doesn't have the same respect for you as was shown here tonight. Congratulations and good luck.
something to give you on behalf of the City Council that I'm sure you'll be very happy to receive, and I would like for you to unveil it tonight, show the audience and your family what we've presented to you on behalf of a grateful council and an administration. That's you and Mary sitting right there in those box seats. <laughs> Congratulations. Let me say that I truly appreciate the comments of my colleagues in the city council, the city manager, the mayor, and uh, those who have attended this gathering here tonight. It's been a great honor and a, uh, something that I'll never forget, and I'm sure my family feel the same as I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councillor Howe, you are excused. Thank you. you will not be making the motion to adjourn this evening. <laughs> have a great time. It was a pleasant, pleasant journey serving with you. We'll have about a three-minute recess while everyone who's here heads out to Fairmont Street, I think. <laughs>